Hi, I am Joe Russo. And I'm Anthony Russo, and we directed Avengers Endgame. And yes, we are still talking about it. <laughs> and we're here to do Avengers support. Blue at Blue Blogs. So a baby born a few days before the snap that vanishes during the snap is technically now five years old, right? But it's still a newborn because it didn't age during the five years it vanished. Also, is Spider-Man 20 now? Did he age? It's been five years. Yeah, so anybody who did go away at the snap, uh, when they come back, they come back at the moment they went away. So they sort of missed those five years, while everybody who didn't go away was aging those five years like we all normally do. So you wouldn't age if you were zapped out of existence. You would just stop existing, and then when you were brought back, you would begin existing again. So no, the baby would not be five years older, the baby would just be the exact same age it was when it disappeared. So hence Tom Holland, uh, uh, his, his Peter Parker character would be uh, uh, the same age that he was when he disappeared. Why five years? Why not 10? Why not five months? What's the significance? Uh, basically we wanted it, uh, to pick a period of time that was long enough to have forced everybody to move on. You could no longer sort of be clinging to what we should have done, how we should have done it differently. Maybe we can uh, st go back and stop this. We wanted, we wanted everybody to go through a life cycle where they had to really commit to, a, to an existence where this was their new reality. And uh, five years just seemed like the right amount of time for that. This is from Needy Unemotional at Sam Keaton. Question 44, why did they not show how Bruce merged his brain with Hulk's movie? We wanted to track how every single one of the Avengers was moving forward from the experience of Infinity War. And Banner had this very unique experience where he, in the opening of Infinity War, he loses to Thanos as Hulk. Later in the film, he loses to um, Thanos as Banner. And so he is left with this reality that, you know, neither version of himself could, could stop Thanos. So in the five-year time elapse that happens early on in Endgame, he sort of dedicates himself to trying to better himself so that this never happens again. And that's sort of the proper motivation for him to finally figure out how to reconcile the two sides of himself. Okay. And that was just our, the specific needs for our story. And now you have this incredible action figure. It's got some good flex. Okay, quick question. How do you return a soul stone? It's not like Black Widow's soul will be floating around or going back to her body. And also, what was Captain America's reaction to seeing Red Skull again? So this is from Moses at Ixinix. So um, you get an email like you do on Amazon, and then you have to print up a label, put it on the stone, <laughs> stick it in the mail, it goes back to Red Keep Skull. Keep your fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, so seeing Red Skull again, I don't know, that's a good question. Uh, Cap me, hopefully Cap will remember him. Alex Gross, why did you kill Tony Stark? Pass. Uh, <laughs> Victor Stone, mean muggin. Hold on, Hulk has a whole healing factor. Why didn't his arm heal? <laughs> the Hulk has never come up against every Infinity Stone in a gauntlet uh, and the pure power of those stones. And Thanos is nearly invincible and then he did not heal either. So. Clearly, when you wield the full power of the Infinity Stones, it is irreparable damage to your being. If it doesn't even kill you. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's settle this once and for all. Who is the most powerful Avenger? There seems to be some sort of poll here where Scarlet Witch got 23%, Captain Marvel got 6%, mm. Thor got 19%, and the kid from Iron Man 3, 52%, correct. Jeff Fogel, how do you decide what to keep directly from the comics and what to use as inspiration? A lot of it is what you emotionally respond to in the books, how you feel about the character. There's no sort of formula to why we would pull something from the books, it's really just inspiration. It's like when Winter Soldier, we loved the tone of the original run of the books, so we use that tone in the movies. Sometimes we'll find a, a, a panel uh, uh, that we love and then we'll, we'll try to build a moment around the panel like we did in Civil War. But uh, it's, it's impossible to sort of define any sort of scientific approach to it. Yeah, and oftentimes, sometimes there's something that we like in the books that doesn't translate cleanly to a, to a modern day movie and we find another way to interpret it. This is Garrett 51 at Amazing Garrett. I feel like the whole reason Professor Hulk was introduced was to force at Mark Ruffalo in a mocap suit more as a punishment for leaking spoilers by at Russo Brothers. This is a very interesting theory. It may be true, but we'll never admit to it being true. Cat, 
So who wants to sit for six hours and watch both Avengers movies back to back with me to catch Easter eggs? Not us. <laughs> We've seen them too many times. <sighs> At Russo Brothers, serious question. When Doctor Strange is seeing all the scenarios for how the war could end, does he see it like a montage or a movie? How do you, as the creators, see this happening in his brain? This is a great question, yeah, and it's, cool. I mean, Strange has to exert an immense amount of energy and to, go in, to go into this state. And the amount of time that he's in this state, as we know from, from the history in his own standalone film, Doctor Strange, he could be in that, in that state for who knows how long. So it could have taken Strange an immensely long time to actually review all these scenarios. He has to physically live them yeah. uh, and then die in each of them. And right before he dies, he has to reset it, as we saw at the end of Doctor Strange, uh, and, uh, and do it again uh, and take copious notes each time he does it. Right. Great question, though, Marissa. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Rooster Brothers, what happened to the Vision's body? That's a good question. Yeah, it is a very good question. Feels like a story for another time. Yeah. Curvy Llama has an incredible uh, Twitter handle. Uh, if you could be one Avenger, who would it be and why? Powers, good looks, personality, respond with gifts. Mine would be female Thor, funny, witty, kind, carefree, powerful, badass. That's a very accurate description. Yeah, I think I think Spider-Man was my favorite character growing up. Uh, I think any, any kid would want to swing on webs or crawl walls, uh, and I love his suit. I'll take Falcon because I am really interested in what his future as Captain America will be. Sean Endo. Hey, Rooster Brothers, I thought the Avengers weren't supposed to talk about the future in the past. So why did Professor Hulk talk about Strange giving the Time Stone to Thanos to the Ancient One? About conscience, may I mention. Uh, that, that is a back to the future rule um, that is not uh, applicable uh, in our universe. We're playing by a different set of rules. Um, watch the scene again with uh, Hulk, uh, Rhodey, and Paul Rudd, Scott Lang, and just listen to how they describe uh, the rules uh, of time travel in our movie. Those two scenes that play back to back sort of describe the you know, it gives you everything you need to know about time travel in this you, film. You may be thinking about the, the, the fact that Doctor Strange doesn't want to tell Tony about what timeline they're in as they're going into the climactic fight with Thanos. The difference between these two situations are, you know, when, when, when Smart Hulk is talking to the Ancient One, the Ancient One is no longer alive during the events that they're discussing. Whereas Tony is very much involved in the events that he and, he and Strange are talking about. So there, there's a little bit of a distinction there. And that's just really talking to someone about, you know, just prior to their death. You don't want to emotionally confuse them or create a situation where they no longer want to go through with what they're supposed to go through Especially with. Especially when your chances are 1 in 14 million. You have to be very, very careful about not messing it up. Daniel Rickman. As much as I love Infinity War, just rewatch it again. The consistency with the characters' power levels all over the place. Scarlet Witch and Vision, two of the most powerful Avengers, lost to two aliens and were saved by Captain America and Black Widow or human. What? Vision gets uh, skewered at the very beginning of that fight. So he's really not functioning at full power. Uh, he then becomes uh, a, would, what would we, a liability in the fight because now Scarlet Witch has to protect a, a crippled Vision, and it puts her at a disadvantage. And as Vision mentions, that weapon sort of has an effect on him that he didn't expect. So once Vision and Wanda are cornered, uh, because Vision can't function at that point, uh, Cap and uh, Natasha and Falcon have been functioning as a unit for three years since Civil War, a very tight unit. Uh, is it three years or two years since Civil War is two? I think it was two. They surprise attack Proxima and Corvus, uh, get the jump on them and, uh, and help uh, uh, Vision and Wanda escape. That's how uh, that scene played out. Yeah, and those are powerful, powerful aliens. But not when you sneak up on them. Why did you just delete a scene like this? Jafaka kakakao kanao kos, are you crazy? Or what, Tony deserved it. And they're asking why we deleted the scene where everyone is kneeling. 
we deleted it. This is a scene on the bonus features on yeah. the home release. And that's why we deleted it. Yeah. So we had some bonus features yeah. for the DVD release. That's really important. Super important. Next question. Shannon Rona. Okay, I hope one day the At Reserve Brothers see my dedication to Tony Stark and Pepper Potts. This is just from 2018 and all handmade. We're seeing it and it's incredible and you're amazing. Yeah. And thank you for being such a huge fan of Tony and Pepper Potts. You know what confused me while watching Endgame? The fact that there are two Barton daughters. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but both of Joe Russo's kids got to be in the movie. One was Leah Barton, I believe, and one was... Lila. But, but both never shared screen time. Yes, both my daughters were in the movie. One of them did play Lila Barton at the beginning of the film, uh, and uh, she was snapped out of existence. Uh, the other played a fan of the Hulk in the diner. They're completely unconnected characters. They do look a little bit alike, so maybe that was confusing. But uh, uh, they are and not... I think she may have been credited as Leah. Yeah. in the credits. But not right. as Leah Barton right. in the yeah. credits. So just, this is just a random uh, kid hanging out in a diner who happened to see the Hulk and wanted his autograph. And just happens to share a resemblance to Lila Barton. Bar yes. All right, Nicholas Bauer. Uh, Russo Brothers, how come Peter Parker's friends didn't age in Avengers Endgame? I understand why Peter didn't age, but five years went by for everyone else. And what should be 2023, we see Pete reunite with Ned at school, surrounded by kids with backpacks, that I missed something. Well, yes. Ned also, you, we, Ned also went away. You know, any, anybody who is still the same age as Peter Parker went away as well. Uh, and kids with backpacks in that school are all kids who uh, uh, went away and now are back at school, or kids who were, you know, uh, nine years old when the snap happened and now they're freshmen. Um, so, uh, so that, uh, have you seen uh, the new Spider-Man movie? Explains it. Thick. My one problem with Endgame is that Falcon got the shield. Why didn't Bucky get it? Hmm. Falcon is an amazing character who uh, who is certainly very deserving of the shield. Yeah. Uh, and, and Bucky, you know, look at the thing we've loved exploring about Bucky is his. He has a very complicated history. He has a damaged mind. I don't know. You want to hand a very powerful weapon to somebody who is uh, vulnerable like that. And Macho Man, Russo Brothers. How do you guys not have any Nova Corp member in a fight against Thanos? Love the movie, but just boggles my mind. Didn't even have to be Richard Ryder. I look closely at that scene again, there, and you will see. There are thousands of people. Yeah, you will see Richard there. Ryder in the background of a shot. Easter egg. Everyone, thank you so much. These were great for, questions. Yes, yeah. sending in these questions. We really appreciate it. And hopefully, you got satisfactory answers. Yeah and I hopefully you have answers of your own. See ya.